Hi guys, DocuSign and Dropbox Sign are two e-signature software tools, but which one should you be using? To help you make an informed decision, I will explain the main differences between Dropbox Sign and DocuSign and will consider five criteria to see how these two tools stack up. We will leave the link below in the description, you can use it. You can start with the free version and if you like it more, you can upgrade, risk free. I thank you for using the links in the description. So let's find out which is better for you. For the ease of use, both Dropbox Sign and DocuSign are relatively easy to use, with various independent reviewers praising the tools for their simplicity and convenience. However, Dropbox Sign does streamline the sign-in process more than DocuSign, since it takes users from uploading a document to sending it for signing in just to screens. With DocuSign, you have to navigate through more screens to complete the process, while DocuSign has a more extensive feature set. Dropbox Sign's simple and user-friendly setup makes it a more popular solution among those seeking a basic signing tool. That's why it's a preferred option for freelancers and solo users. So when it comes to ease of use, Dropbox Sign is the preferred option. It offers a fast, smooth, and simple signing workflow for inexperienced users and makes signing documents online easy. However, Dropbox Sign is a great choice if you are seeking basic signing functionality and ease but a poor choice if you are looking for an easy way to manage your contract from end to end. And for the e-signature process, when you first access DocuSign, you are prompted to attach a file. If you are a signatory, you will be directed to the next stage, which is documents processing. Following that, you will be asked how many signatories there are, and you will be able to order the sign-in files and write a comment for the other signatories. When you have completed all of those actions, DocuSign takes charge and sends an email to the other signatories. Dropbox Sign's method is a little more user-friendly and simplistic. After you log in, you must enter the signatory's name. And if you are the signatory, you can allow the computer to use your credentials to sign documents automatically. In comparison to DocuSign's four or five screens, Dropbox Sign requires just two. But both companies focus on the ease of sign-in from any device, particularly mobile devices and online platforms, except in situations where network connectivity is required to complete the signature, each service provides offline document signatures. So DocuSign has more steps than Dropbox Sign does, but they offer analytics and other advanced features. Dropbox Sign is ideal if all you need is a tool to sign your online paperwork. And for the features and functionality, DocuSign and Dropbox Sign have a lot of overlapping features and functionalities, but DocuSign tends to offer more robust options as parallel paid levels. For example, DocuSign has more native integrations, more templates, integrated payments collection. That last one is picky. Processing payments after a contract is signed can be tedious and time-consuming, often leading to delays in payments. DocuSign streamlines the payments collection process so users can collect payments as soon as the document is signed. DocuSign also has some extra pre-made files that Dropbox Sign doesn't. Radio buttons, approve and decline buttons, payments item, drawing, formula, attachments, and note. This adds some flexibility that you don't get with Dropbox Sign. But the question is, do you need to use one of those files? So it will depend on your use case. For the customization, both Dropbox Sign and DocuSign enable users to add custom branding on document sends, but each in different ways. DocuSign's custom branding empowers businesses to upload logos, change buttons, and amend the colors within documents. This is fairly standard functionality for an e-signature tool, and something that enables teams to add a personal touch to their contracts. Dropbox Sign exceeds this standard functionality and offers white labeling too. This is one of the biggest advantages Dropbox Sign has offered DocuSign, and it allows users to truly customize their sign-in flow in a more sophisticated and professional way. Although Dropbox Sign and DocuSign both offer customizable branding options for their customers, it's worth mentioning that these features are only available in their more expensive plans. In fact, this is something that Dropbox Sign's independent reviewers criticize frequently. So, if you are looking for an e-signing provider that offers the most flexible and customizable branding functionality, Dropbox Sign will be your preferred choice. 
However, these features are locked behind more advanced Dropbox sign plans, so you will need to be prepared to spend more in order to access them. And for the integrations, by connecting your electronic signature software to your other tools, you can streamline your workflows. Dropbox Sign offers integrations with Dropbox, HubSpot, Microsoft Word, and Google Drive under lower priced plans. However, if you want access to enterprise grade integrations like Salesforce, Microsoft SharePoint, and Oracle, you will need to opt for their standard plan or custom enterprise plan. With Duco Sign, you will get access to basic integrations on all plans Box, Dropbox, Evernote, Google Drive, and Microsoft 365. If you want to integrate your accounts with your CRM, like Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft SharePoint, NetSuite Sugar CRM, etc., then you need to purchase a custom enterprise plan. So, DocuSign integrates with more CRMs than Dropbox Sign, but you have to pay a higher amount to access those integrations. If you use a popular CRM, you will get more bang for your buck by choosing Dropbox Sign's standard plan. And for the pricing, Dropbox Sign and DocuSign offer many similar features, but they differ a bit in costs. Dropbox Sign offers four paid plans. The essential plan is $15 per month when paid annually. You get unlimited sign in for one user. The Dropbox Plus eSign plan is $25 per month for up to one user when paid annually. You not only get unlimited sign in, but also Dropbox features such as 3TB of encrypted storage and 100GB of file transfers. The standard plan costs $25 per user per month when paid annually. With this plan, you don't get the Dropbox storage features, but you do get advanced e-signature features like in-person sign-in functionality, customized branding, SMS authentications, reporting, and bulk sending. The premium plan starts at 5 plus users for a custom quote with advanced signal fields, single sign-on, multi-teams, performance dashboards, and more. DocuSign also offers 4 plans. The personal plan is $10 per month when paid annually. With this plan, you can have up to one user and sign 5 documents per month. The standard plan is $25 per user per month when paid annually. You can pay for up to 50 users in your accounts and you can send unlimited documents for signatures. You also get templates, team reports and customized branding. The business pro plan is $40 per user per month when paid annually. You get everything in the standard plan plus signer attachments, SMS authentications, collaborative files, and payment collection. Enhanced plans include all the features of the personal standard and business pro plans, with additional customization for a tailored solution. So, if you need to sign fewer than 5 documents per month, DocuSign's personal plan will be your cheapest option, but if you want animated documents, then you should opt for Dropbox Sign's essential plan. All things considered, Dropbox Sign offers more features for a lower price. So, choosing between Dropbox Sign and Tuco Sign depends on your business and your needs. While Dropbox Sign is typically a better choice for small businesses, Tuco Sign offers more advanced features and similar plans, such as conditional fields, unlimited templates, and more insightful reporting. So, while small businesses will probably opt for Dropbox Sign, larger companies should review the costs and features truly before making their final decision. Whichever tool you choose, I would recommend trying the free version first, risk-free, and if you like it more, you can upgrade. Other than that, it's up to you. So yeah, that's it for this video. You can check the links in the description, that helps a lot, thank you. So hopefully this video helped you out, if it did, leave a comment, click the like button, that helps you, and bye-bye.